chain of events. In the earlier case of R. V. Tab O'Malley in 1954, that we discussed in the previous lecture, a slightly different approach was adopted, but with a similar effect. In that case, a criminal gang badly beat the victim and believing him to be dead, threw him off the cliff. It transpired that the victim had still been alive at the time, but subsequently died of exposure. Again, the issue in the case was that there was no coincidence. In this case, the trial judge adopted the concept that there could be a series of acts in which the necessary mens rea would have been present at some point and that this satisfied the requirement for coincidence. The Privy Council decided to support this approach and the appeal against conviction was dismissed. More recently, in R. V. Lebrun, 1991, the Court of Appeals upheld the defendant's conviction for manslaughter and took the view that the original assault and subsequent blow which caused the death were part of a series of acts. In this case, the defendant had quarreled with his wife and knocked her out. Whilst he was attempting to remove his wife from the scene, he dropped her, causing her to hit her head on the curbstone which brought about her death. The fact that the courts have adopted a flexible approach, as opposed to the narrow interpretation of the need for contemporaneity, seems to have stood up to scrutiny. To hold that what happened amounted to a separate actus reus and mens rea would have taken the criminal justice system down a technical road which society and the victims and their families may have found hard to support. Why do we need such a rule? Surely, all that needs to be established is that the accused caused the injury or harm? This may be too simplistic an approach and fail to identify those cases in which the actus reus was carried out when the accused was in a different state of mind from the mens rea required for the offense charged. For example, it might be possible for the defendant to cause harm in circumstances which amount to an accident at one point in time, but for the defendant to form a hostile attitude towards the victim at some later time. It would be extremely difficult to establish the level of blameworthiness appropriate in such cases, and the jury will be left floundering as to what approach to take. 